I want you to stand to your feet, please. Just think of the goodness of Jesus. Just take time out. Just use one of your hands. And just count five reasons why. I know you want to use the other hand because you got more than five reasons, but just use one hand and think about how good God has been to you. I got one reason. Yes, I got two reasons. Yes, I have three reasons. Yes, I got four reasons. I even got five reasons why I love the Lord. And if you wanted to use the other hand, you can use that hand and continue counting the blessings of God. Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. I really love the Lord I really love the Lord you don't know what he's done for me gave me the big Story. And I love him. I love him. I really love the Lord. Amen. All right. Let let's let's get into our our message, I know some of you probably are in a rush to do some, some Valentine's event. Amen. You, you want to, your, 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 amen. You want to treat your spouse right? Amen. Just on this day, hopefully that's consistently along the year. Amen. We give God glory and the praise. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. This is God's day. Amen. I know what the world is saying about Valentine's, which is all good. Amen. But we give God praise. Amen. Because there are so many reasons why we love the Lord. Amen. I'm going to go back um, of Luke. Amen. Chapter 2. Amen. Um, I just want to um, go a little deeper into what we talked about last week, amen, um, about taking care of yourself, praise the Lord, amen. The question still remains, amen, listen, 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 the question still remains, how do you get better, amen. If you've ever been sick, you want to know how to get better, praise the Lord. If you've ever been down, you know, on a bed of affliction, you want to know how to get better. If you've ever been down emotionally, financially, spiritually, mentally, you want to know how do you get better. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because you don't want to stay in that state. Amen. You want to do what? You want to get better. Praise the Lord. So I want you to look with me at chapter 2. Again, chapter 2 of Luke, starting at verse 39. Amen. If you have your Bibles, please read with me. Amen. So I know that we're all together in unison. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you have it, 
You can stand to your feet one more time. Amen. I'm not going to ask you to stand anymore after this. All right. Starting at verse 39 of chapter what? Amen. Of book what? Amen. And we're together. And it reads, And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth, and the child and was strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover, and when he was 12 years, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, they returned. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, Keep going. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And when he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them, but his mother kept all these sayings. And Jesus, what? Increased in wisdom and stature and in the favor of God. Amen. Amen. All right. You may be seated. I just need this here for an assistance. How do you get better? The answer is take care of yourself. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, let me give you an illustration of how important it is to take care of yourself. If I was driving along a mountainside, and there's cliffs on the right hand side. Now you know you're afraid, right? Mm -hmm. Now if I steered toward the cliff, now I could think, well, God's gonna send an angel. Amen. And the angel's gonna help me. Or I could say, well, God is going to slam on the brakes for me so I don't go over the cliff. Or maybe God is going to get his hand under the belly of the car and carry me back onto the cliff. Now, you can take that chance, right? Would you take that chance? Because you're going to take care of what? That, amen. 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 All right. I'm going to give you a live illustration of taking care of yourself. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can't depend on everyone else to take care of you. Amen. So I'm going to give you a live illustration. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do what me and my wife do every morning. And this is I'm going to take a glucose test right in front of you. Does anyone know what the glucose test is? Yes. All right. Now, I did my glucose test this morning, and it was 76. Is that all right? That's good. Yeah. Amen. You need to recognize how to take care of yourself. You want to get better? Yeah. 
You got to take care of yourself. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. All right. So, simply what we do is we take this little thing right here and we stick the little, what I call the poker, and then you take this off right here and then there's the poker. Am I doing it right so far, Sister yeah. Georgia? Amen. This is the monitor right here. Yeah. Okay. This is the alcohol. So what I do here is I wet the alcohol. Yeah. You got to learn how to take care of yourself, y'all. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to wait until I get to mm. the yearly appointment. Mm. You hear what I said? Yes. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and just alcohol my finger right there like that. Praise the Lord. And then I'm going to take this here. Now, I got it set on five because five will prick me good enough to get some blood. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to go ahead and just prick. Ow! All right. And I'm going to push it up right here. I'm going to push up on the finger until the blood show. Amen. And then, what I forgot to do is take out one of these bad boys. And you're going to stick this down in the meter. And then I wait until the meter says go. The, the meter's going to tell me, put some blood on me. So I'm going to put it right on here. And then we're going to get that reading. All right. So I got a nurse in the house. What's the reading, nurse? 92. And the reason why it's 92 is I had something to eat this morning. Praise the Lord. All I'm showing you is take care of yourself. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Did you get that? Yeah. Take care of yourself. Nobody's going to take care of you better than who? Yeah. Than you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know that when you go into Kroger and you go into Publix, they have the uh, 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 thing you can sit down and take your high blood pressure. Go in there and take it. You're already in the grocery store. You don't want to know you got high blood pressure when you're having a stroke. Did you hear what I said? Y'all better listen to me. See, I, 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 I thought about this for three weeks and said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do it because this is the most practical way to show you to do what? Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Okay? All right. There's three ways that you can take care of yourself. I'm sorry, there's four. Four ways that we learned uh, in the scripture here that we gave with Jesus and his parents. Number one is you have to prioritize yourself. Praise the Lord. You got to prioritize yourself. You see, if you can get better, then you are more valuable, amen, to the whole world. You're more valuable to the church. You're more valuable to your family, amen. If you're in good health, you're more valuable to your family. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So prioritize yourself. Notice that when they came looking for Jesus after three days, he had prioritized whose business? The Lord's business. He said, wish you not looking for me. How long are you looking for me? First of all, the first place you should have checked was the temple. You went everywhere but where you should have been looking. Praise the Lord. But he had prioritized the Lord's business. He said, wish ye not that I was about my father's business. Now, when you look in 1 Corinthians 9, we read it last week, and it talks about how Philip, Philip, excuse me, Paul is explaining about the way that people train to compete in an athletic event. Now, in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 27, he says, I keep under my body. In other words, I'm always making sure the body's doing all right. Are you with me so far? Amen. And then he said, I keep under my body. Why? So that I can bring it into subjection. So I can make my body my slave. My body serves me. I don't serve my body. Oh, did y'all get that? Praise the Lord. So 
So it's your job, amen, to keep the body in shape. It's your job. Just like we sing, body praise the Lord, body clap your hands, body do your dance, amen. You're telling the body what to do. The body doesn't tell you what to do. Now I'm going to go slow because this is not preaching time. This is teaching time. Okay? In the book of Matthew 6 and 33, he says, seek ye first. Didn't say seek us first. It's talking about a personal relationship. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto what? You. So in order for you to take care of you, you have to do first things first. And first things first is God's business. That's right, amen. My uncle James, before he passed away, used to tell me, you take care of God's business, and he'll take care of your business. Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't be afraid or don't lack a trust in God so much that you won't put him first, knowing that all the things will be added unto you. That's the way he works. That's his multiplication. That's his formula. Me first, you second. It doesn't mean if you take care of me first, it's not enough for you. There's always enough. There's plenty of pie, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, give God his time, give God his reverence, give God his trust, and he will take care of you. In John 9 and, 40 and 4, it says, I must do the works of him who sent me while it is day. In other words, the work of God is first. Okay, I have a very, very simple uh, way to keep my life prioritized. Okay, very simple. God first, family second, work third. The work never comes in front of God. The work never comes in front of the family. Praise the Lord. Even the family doesn't come before God. Because I know the way that I'm taking care of them is by keeping my hand in God's hand. Praise the Lord. Very simple way to prioritize your life, okay? All right. So you got step one is prioritize your life. Step two is prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Be ready to ask questions. Be ready to hear. When they were looking for Jesus, it said that he was in the midst of the doctors asking questions and hearing them. You see, that's one of the reasons why we can't get, you know, to the next level in life is because we're not preparing ourselves to ask questions. If you, the reason why you ask questions is because you don't know. Is that simple? The reason why you, the reason why it's important to ask questions is because you don't know. Praise the Lord. Men, we know how it is when we're traveling and the wife say, you know where you're going? I know where I'm going. <laughs> my wife she don't she don't give me two three times to say that she say why don't you just pull over in the gasoline station to ask somebody you know how to get to so and so and so praise the lord amen. amen why do we let pride get in the way of just asking simple questions praise the lord the other day i was in the um in the market over on East Ponce, where they have all the different, you know, uh, nation's foods and, you know, everything that you want over there. And I was looking for ginger tea. I wanted it in the box. I'm looking and looking and looking and couldn't find it. Well, there was a lady who was walking with her daughter and I started to complain out loud. Man, I can't find no ginger tea, man. Gee. Hoping somebody would hear me. And she said, why don't you just go over and get the the, the, the raw ginger root and know it's fresh and make it yourself. Now, mind you, I've done that before, but I was locked into, I wanted it in the box. But when I asked the question, then I got the answer. You see what I'm saying? When I asked the question, then I got the answer. If you are trying to prepare to do something you've never done, you're going to have to ask questions. Praise the Lord. These these people who competed in the events in the book of Corinth, they prepared themselves 10 months in advance. 10 months in advance. Okay? You got to prepare yourself. You just don't come out the womb and go to college. There's a process 
There's, there's, there's preparing time. There's questions and answers. And then when you get to that time to go to college, guess what? There's a certain level of expectation. Amen. They ain't going to go back to you counting one plus one is two. They're going to assume that you know something. Praise the Lord. Okay? So, you have to prioritize yourself. You have to prepare yourself if you want to get better. All right? Now, let's talk about positioning. When they found Jesus, he was in the midst of the doctors. He was in the temple in the midst of the doctors. He had positioned himself, Stephanie, where he could get an answer. Praise the Lord. He had positioned himself where people were of a certain level of expertise. Okay? Young ladies, young men, children, listen to me. You got to ask mom and dad questions. Praise the Lord. Why would you ask people on your same level at school? Oh, y'all not hearing me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's why I don't listen to single folk when I'm married. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, my mother used to say, you know, when, 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 when folks didn't have any kids, and they tried to tell her how to raise her kids. She said, I ain't listening to her. She ain't got chick, no child. She ain't got chick, no child. Well, I'm listening to her. You have to position yourself amongst people that can give you the right answer. Yeah. Especially when you're doing something brand new. Yeah. Amen. When you're going into a business for the first time, amen. Thank God for Sister Tanae. When I formed my corporation, I had to go ask some questions. I did not know. And I still call her and ask questions. Praise the Lord. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Then you can move from ignorance to knowledge. The most expensive thing is ignorance. Ignorance can be very expensive. Praise the Lord. That's why it's important to position yourself and ask questions. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 1 through 7, it tells the story of the Queen of Sheba. Amen. She was smiling now. The Queen. <laughs> the Queen of Sheba. Sheba was a part of Saba, and Saba was in Ethiopia. She heard of the wisdom of Solomon. And she said, I know what I heard, but I don't believe it. So I'm going to travel from Ethiopia to Jerusalem to see him for myself. So I can position myself in front of him and ask him, the word says, some hard questions. And then when she got there and began to question the king, she said that what I heard was only half. That's why you got to ask questions because the people you asking not telling you the whole story. Well, y'all didn't hear what I said. When she got there, she said, when I recognized how wise he was and the amount of finances that he had and sat at his table where they fed me with silverware of gold. Do you hear what I'm saying? She said, I did not hear the half of what I have been told. Praise the Lord. Don't be afraid to ask questions. And don't be afraid to position yourself with the people that can give you the answer. Praise the Lord. Going to college for the first time. I've been to college. Amen. I made my mistakes. Praise the Lord. You need to come ask me. Pastor Bruce, what's college life like? Amen. And I'm going to tell you the raw truth. Amen. And that's maybe why you won't come talk to me. I'm going to tell you the truth. And guess what? Believe it or not, there's some folk who don't want to know the truth. Because the truth is going to direct you. The truth is going to give you limitations, what you can and cannot do. Amen. That's why a lot of folk don't ask questions. It's because they know the truth is going to force them to do what they don't want to do. You're going to college for the first time? Come talk to me. 
I ain't gonna hold nothing back. I'm gonna be clear as day. <laughs> Amen. I'm gonna tell you what to avoid. I'm gonna tell you when the enemy's coming, when he dressed up like something else, and on the inside he's something else. Y'all better listen. My number is 770-315-4714. And Pastor Bruce, amen, doesn't work a 1040 job so he can make time to see you. Amen. And I do answer my phone. How many of y'all called me and got the voicemail? Very few. I answer my phone. Amen. Position yourself amongst people that can give you the answer, especially if they've already been experts in the area where you're trying to go. And if you want to be better, the quicker you get the answer, the better off you are. Amen. All right. I was talking to, let me get another illustration. I was talking to my nephew the other day. My, ne my nephew's name is Brandon. And Brandon told me that he was visiting a man. Um, no, he, he went to an event. And at the event, he said they were, they were millionaires there and folk very successful. And they were just telling their story of how they became. They weren't born that way, but how they became. You know, the route that they took. Amen. The, the mistakes that they made. And he said after the, the, the event, he said there was an African brother from, um, mm -mm, not Liberia, Nigeria, there it is. And he was talking to one of the presenters. And he said, we're giving something in Washington, D.C. And we would like to use one of your hotels. Excuse me. This guy he was talking to had a number of hotels in Washington, D.C. African American. It's, what month is it right now? February. And what month is that? Black History. Black History Month. That's why I'm bringing this up, okay? He's talking to him and he says, I'd like to have one of your hotels as the place where the dignitaries are staying for this event that we're having. You know what I'm saying? This is not people who ain't got no money. You see, you, 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 if you're trying to get some, you need to put yourself in the position where folks who got some. Well, y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. I mean, it wasn't like he wanted to go into the hotel business, but he was around success. He was breathing success. Amen. The energy was flowing in the room. Amen. It gave him a I can do rather than I can't do. Oh, Y'all didn't hear what I said. If you want to do better, you got to not only prioritize you. Amen. Try to get in contact with myself or pastor between 8 a.m. and 10. Pass him a right. Hmm? Try to get in contact with us between 8 and 10. Because in those two hours, and sometimes it bleeds over into 12 o'clock, in those hours, we are taking care of ourselves. The gift and the talent that God has given us, we spend at least two hours each morning. Am I right, Pastor? Each morning on ourselves. We prioritize ourselves. Step one to getting better is prioritize yourself. Step two is prepare to ask questions and be ready to hear. And step three is position yourself amongst those that have what you want. Praise the Lord. Am I making sense to you? I told you, it's, it's not preaching time, it's teaching time. It's teaching time. All right. And lastly, take what you learn and practice. Take what you learn and practice. Amen? My daughter sometimes catches me practicing. Who are you preaching to down there? Amen? 
I got to go over this over and over and over again. Amen. So, so I can look at you rather look at my notes all day. Praise the Lord. I don't want me to be looking at my notes the first time you're hearing it. Praise the Lord. So what you've learned, you begin to practice. Amen. In those two hours this morning, I'm reading for two hours. And I'm reading what people are saying about what I want to do. Public speaking. Lifting people. Coaching people. Training people. I just don't get up here and just do this. I'm studying this every day, two hours at least. Hallelujah. And then I practice. In the Bible, in Ecclesiastes 10, verse 10, it says, He that wit the edge doeth much work, but he that don't, he works harder. Wit the edge means to sharpen your skill. I'm sharpening the axe. I'm sharpening the axe. Amen. So that when I go to chop down the tree, Bindu, I chop it down faster than you do because you're dealing with a dull axe. You know, <laughs> my mom used to say, don't, don't, don't bring a butter knife to a gunfight. <laughs> hey, amen. What you going to cut with a butter knife? And the same thing holds true for your talent and your skill. You got to wit the edge. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 10, you got to wit the edge. Amen. In the word it says that Jesus grew stronger in spirit and in stature. And then in that 52nd verse, amen, you notice I'm not looking at it. In that 52nd verse, amen, of the second chapter, it says that he not only grew stronger, but he increased in favor amongst God and man. If you sharpen your axe, if you get better at your skill, folks are going to start calling you. Praise the Lord. Had a friend of mine I haven't seen, a kid that I uh, taught Sunday school with, spoke to him yesterday on Facebook, and uh, I explained to him what I was doing, what the mama said, and he said, oh yeah, my fraternity, uh, we, 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 um, we have a mentoring program at my daughter's school. We got 27 young men that we mentor every Tuesday night. I said, really? I said, every young man in America needs this book called Mama Said. They all need it. And the reason why is because the principles and the guidelines in there that guided me. Never been to jail, never been on crack, never smoked no crack cocaine. Come on, somebody. Okay, all those guiding principles kept me and made me who I am today. I believe all those young men need this book. You know what he did? The first thing he did was he bought a book. And then he said to me, he said, how can we get uh, all these young men those books? You see? If you sharpen your axe, you will gain favor with God and with men. Praise the Lord. With God and with men. They will start calling you. Did you hear what I say? All my debts are paid. All my needs are met. What I was chasing is now chasing me. <laughs> Y'all didn't get that. I'm telling you, you got to write that down somewhere and get that in your spirit. Speak it through your body, through your soul, to your spirit, man, and then start living that. Amen. Any more of these days, guess what's happening? With me, any more of these days, when I speak it, God does it. He said, you shall have whatsoever you say. Believe that, ladies and gentlemen. That's what faith is. Faith is, I believe whatever I say. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. I'm going to speak life to me. Praise the Lord. All my debts are paid. My biggest debt. House note, paid. Oh, that's a lot too. Paid. Pastor, paid. And guess what I do? The Bible says give and it shall be given unto you. Right? Okay? Give and it shall be given unto you. All right? So what I do is I just don't pray for my house note. Pastor, whether you know it or not, you're going to get paid off too. In the name of Jesus. Anything that I pray for myself, I pray for him too. Praise the Lord. I pray good health, pray for that too. I pray all that's to pay, I pray for him too. And I call y'all name too. Amen. Every now and then, if I think about y'all, I make a phone call, don't I? 
Amen. I thought about Pop Wellington. I said, Sister Master, when you get home, tell Pop one talk to him. Praise the Lord. Whatever you want for yourself, one of the keys to getting it is pray somebody else get it. You said, Pastor, that's crazy. But the word says, give and it shall be given unto you. Give that prayer to somebody else and then watch God bless you. Amen. This one thing I noticed. I noticed that in Joshua 1 verse 8 it says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. You see, in order to get good, you're going to have to practice. Now watch this verse. Listen carefully. That verse says, this book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth. But I shall meditate on that. That's practicing. Meditate on it day and night that I may observe to do all that's written therein. Then I'm going to have good success. Then, that's one of the main things that's going to make you better is be consistent. Consistently prioritize yourself. Tomorrow you'll catch pastor playing that horn between 8 and 10. And the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. You'll catch me doing the same thing consistently. This is where your success comes. Consistently place yourself with people who have your answer. And get away from those who got your problem. Okay? Amen. And prepare. Prepare. Ask questions. If anything else, just... If you just take one of these four things, ask questions, prioritize, prepare, practice, you're going to get better. You say, Pastor, I can't do them all. Grab one. Just start with one. Be more consistent. Exercise what? Four times a week. I'm going to exercise Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And do that on a consistent basis. And watch something happen. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. Help us, God, to be better by taking care of ourselves. Help us, O oh Lord, not to wait until the physical to find out where we are. I pray, God, that we will prioritize ourselves by getting our high blood pressure checked, getting our diabetes checked, doing it on a daily basis, taking care of ourselves. And when we take care of ourselves, God, it's us, it's us appreciating what you have gave us. You gave us this body. How are we taking care of what you gave us? Are we prioritizing taking care of ourselves as a way to praise you and thank you for giving us what we have? God, we give you glory and praise. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Take care of yourself.